Hello everyone and welcome to a very very special game uh, from the Warsaw Olympiad in 1935. It's a game uh, between Paul Keres uh, and uh, William Winter. Now uh, this is the first game we're showing by uh, William Winter uh, but there's a very special reason I chose this one. There uh, We have a marriage proposal in today's video uh, but we're gonna get to that as uh, I usually uh, deal with that at the end of the of the actual chess uh, but one of the reasons why I chose uh, such a such a romantic game and uh, well okay pa Paul Keres um, he played many styles he was mostly known for his con uh, great counter-attacking uh, abilities and uh, he played pretty much every great chess player that that ever lived okay he didn't play uh, he didn't play Steinitz, he didn't play Lasker, but he he played everyone from Capablanca, Alekhin, all the way to Bobby Fischer and even Anatoly Karpov, and uh, had uh, great results against all of them. I, th I think he even defeated uh, uh, most of them. And uh, okay, he he didn't have a positive record uh, against Bobby Fischer. He had like uh, Fischer defeated him four times, uh, uh, Keres defeated Fischer three times, and they drew three games. But uh, I mean, all in all, a uh, spectacular player throughout his entire life. Also, one of the reasons why he is. Uh, considered uh, or, or rather called uh, uh, Keres the eternal second as uh, he was always on top of the chess world but there was always that one player that was better than him was it Bobby Fischer, Mikhail Tal or maybe Capablanca or Aljehin or I mean anyone who is uh, considered an absolute legend but uh, he was able to withstand the, the, the test of time uh, to the fullest and he played uh, you know with, with all of them and defeated all of them so uh, although not a world champion himself uh, I believe at least uh, as far as a chess chess channels are concerned uh, uh, Paul Keres does not need any uh, additional introduction but he okay his opponent is William Winter a uh, very strong player himself and usually a player of very sound style he does not uh, go for any crazy attacking um, uh, uh, ideas or, or some wild sacrifices but this game uh, he maybe goes uh, he, he breaks the principles a little too much and uh, against someone like uh, Paul Keres that will not um, uh, go as planned and uh, Winter defeated some very strong players uh, in his own right he defeated Nimzovic he defeated Dr. Milan Widmar he defeated Bronstein he defeated uh, Sultan Khan uh, so many many great players and uh, he was even uh, I, I didn't notice he was a cousin of um, uh, James Matthew Barry the creator of Peter Pan if someone is interested in that but yeah uh, let's uh, check out the game it's quite a nice one 1935 the Warsaw Olympiad uh, and uh, Keres has the white pieces he opens with pawn to e4 and we have c5 by winter uh, going for the Sicilian defense we have knight to f3 and now knight to f6 going for the Nimzovic uh, variation of the Sicilian and although you will not see this uh, line a lot nowadays it's maybe the sixth or seventh most popular move um, uh, for black uh, it has been played by some very very strong players for example uh, Mamedyarov played it quite uh, extensively against every top player in the world and he had great results with it so okay pawn to e5 you, you, you can play knight to c3 or pawn to e5 those are the main options for white so pawn to e5 uh, as in 1935 you uh, if, if you're allowed to go forward with the pawn you, you take that opportunity knight to d5 and now knight to c3 and here while you could capture on c3 uh, maybe this would be giving uh, Keras a bit too much he has a very natural developing uh, squares for, for his pieces and you haven't really gained all that much if anything you will allow him to castle queenside very quickly so instead we have pawn to e6 uh, defending the knight and now comes knight captures on d5 we have e captures on d5 and d4 and uh, this is all pretty much standard theory even in 2022 today but uh, nowadays knight to c6 is the main move here and uh, Mamedyarov played this like I said he played it against Wesley so he played it against Kari he played against Yuan Yi, uh, he played it against Anand, and he never lost a game in this. He even defeated um, uh, Karyakin last year in the Magnus Carlsen Invitational. Uh, but okay, here we have d6, not knight to c6, and now bishop to g5. Keres goes after the black queen, Winter goes queen to a5 check, and now while well, you could go back... Uh, Okay, you already developed the bishop on g5. It's uh, very nicely placed there. Just pawn to c3. Now comes c captures on d4. Now Winter asks, how are you recapturing? You cannot recapture with the pawn. The pawn is pinned. You can play knight captures or you can play queen captures. Uh, uh, on d4 but the, uh, Keres does none of that he plays bishop to d3 I will just show uh, how rich the position is you can even play e6 here it's such a crazy move but uh, how how can black react to this of course you don't want to allow uh, e captures on 
uh, uh, on f7 and if you play bishop captures on e6 then knight captures on d4 uh, will come with an attack on that bishop so basically f captures on e6 should be played knight captures on d4 and now knight to c6 and bishop to b5 and you get some very very uh, cool options here for both sides for example if bishop to d7 you just castle and now if knight captures on d4 you play bishop captures on d7 king captures and queen captures on d4 leaving black uh, with a king on d7 it's not lost for black black still has a very strong center and if black is able to develop with some bishop to e7 moves uh then of course uh, it should be possible but queen captures on g7 white should always be better however if you want to play this you can uh in the game keres played bishop to d3 and now we have d captures on c3 okay you are now threatening some very nasty stuff uh if check comes with uh, uh c captures on b2 uh but keres just nicely castles here and okay you've grabbed some pawns you really grabbed some pawns you should just say uh, okay enough with the pawn grabbing let's call it a day let's continue developing something like knight to c6 maybe and then if rook to e1 seems like there is no good way to defend this you can you can defend with bishop to e6 so that's how black should continue and now okay well, let's say b captures on c3 not a lot of ways for white to continue the attack now we're going to play queen to c7 uh threaten d captures on e5 and after white captures you will develop the dark square bishop and so on now if bishop to f5 you will happily give back the pawn just the uh, castle to safety let's say captures captures and captures and you would get something like this where black has a very nice uh, queen bishop battery here you have the uh, the semi-open file for the rook you can bring the other rook into the game it's a very nice position for black uh, but in the game, uh, William Winter, who, like I said before we started the game, was known to be a very sound, a very, very strong positional player, uh, played C captures on B2. It's uh, maybe a bit too much uh, to go for. And uh, uh, how do you continue? It seems like uh, you should be able to do it because it comes with tempo. Uh, but look at this now. Rook to B1 and now D captures on E5. And how do you how do you play this? Knight captures on e5 and now bishop to d6. This is what William Winter saw when he decided to capture another pawn. And now he says, all right, let's castle and uh, I'm just going to be up too many pawns and uh, beat this Paul Carey's guy, whoever he is. Uh, but, uh, well, that could not be further from the truth uh, as to what will happen in the game. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for, uh, for, uh, for Keres uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on always going uh, uh, for the attack. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is Knight Captures on F7. So congratulations to everyone who found that. Uh, just for fun, I will show another winning line. It's not, uh, I mean, it's just as winning, but Knight Captures on F7 is uh, is stronger and, and faster. You could also play Rook to E1. It seems like it does nothing because Black can just castle to safety, uh, but not really. If Black castles here, you still play Knight Captures on F7. And now there's really nothing to do. If you capture with the King, it's just a matter of a very quick checkmate. Queen H5 check, King goes to G8, and now Queen captures King to F7, and now Bishop to G6 will be checkmate with the rook and bishop doing a fine job of covering that e file so what you could do after knight captures on f7 is capture with the rook but this will not um, help you all that much now you will get rook to e8 with check rook to f8 and now queen to h5 again not much to be done here whatever you play you're just gonna get destroyed if h6 bishop captures if you capture then queen to g6 if you go back with the queen uh queen captures on d5 and that's uh pretty much it if king to h8 even bishop captures on g7 uh, is enough uh, as black uh, cannot counter white along the light squares for example queen captures queen to h5 with check and now after king to g8 bishop c4 check and there are no moves for black you can give up a few pieces, but that's pretty much it. Black should resign here. So uh, after bishop to d6, the game can be won with rook to e1. It's a silent move, but uh, the, the end result will be the same. But knight captures on f7, the move that um, uh, Keres played is much, much quicker. Because now, uh, it seems like it doesn't really do all that much. You, you could even castle saying, okay, uh, I'm just going to castle. You're, you're free to gobble up my bishop on d6. Uh, but white would just continue with queen to h5, and pretty much uh, it's... Uh, 
uh, the same th uh, thing. If rook captures on f7, uh, just a nice queen to h7 check, king to f8, and now queen to h8 checkmate as the bishop covers the e7 square. And even if you don't capture the knight, if you play g6, we just gobble up everything. Bishop captures on g6. Now if captures, captures. And if rook captures on f7, you can still play bishop captures uh, on f7 with check, king g7. And now even bishop to e6 is enough to checkmate the uh, black king because if bishop captures on e6, queen to not that obviously it's not uh, it's not that romantic queen to h6 check king to f7 and now queen to f6 with check king to e8 you will capture a piece here king to f8 and now bishop to h6 with a, a very nice queen bishop checkmate so that's what happens if you try to castle after knight captures on f7 so you have to capture it there's nothing uh, uh, other than capturing so king captures on f7 and now comes queen to h5 with check and again how do you play this uh, the problem is if you move the king if you go to g8 then even queen to e8 check so king to f8 is the only good option now rook b to e1 threatening mate in one and once you defend this just rook to e3 and there's no defense against rook to f3 check uh, that's just uh, that that's just it so instead after queen to h5 check g6 was played uh, seems like it should work but uh, the problem is there's bishop captures on g6 look at this h captures on g6 queen to h8 and now black Black gains a move. It seems like black can defend this, and black plays bishop to f5. It uh, 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 cuts off the the, uh, the, uh, the white piece from the f file. Also attacks the rook on b1, and here just rook f to e1. Another spectacular attacking move by Keres. Uh, just uh, you know, it's a, a very silent move, but it completely locks out the the black king from uh, escaping via the d file. And now, even if black was to go so far as to give up the queen for two rooks, let's say queen captures on e1 check, rook captures, and now b1 queen, uh, you don't have to capture and uh, allow black to, to to take your rook. You can just play queen h7 check, and the rook controls the e file. That's basically the only thing you wanted when you first played rook f to e1, king f8, and now bishop to h6. Another spectacular checkmate. So after rook f to e1, bishop to e4, now closing off the e file, uh, but now just rook captures on e4. Uh, a queen to f6 check would uh, also get the job done, but Keres prefers d uh, rook captures on e4. d captures on e4, and now queen to f6 with check. And it was in this position on move 19 that William Winter resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. The problem is, uh, once you move the king, let's say you go king to g8, uh, just queen captures on g6, you will grab uh, a few pieces, queen captures on d6, and now you will just checkmate the black king. Queen to e7 check, king to g8, and bishop to f6, and there is is no defense against queen to g7 checkmate you could postpone the game uh, with some silly moves but okay we're not gonna uh, play those and if you don't go king to uh, g8 if you go king to e8 it's not much better just queen to e6 with check king f8 and now again another beautiful bishop queen checkmate with bishop to h6 checkmate so uh, although not a not a game you would usually see uh, by the great uh, Paul Keres, but uh, we've seen uh, many many times now as we've covered his games also many times on the channel that uh, he will play any style you want. You 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 try attack him, he will defend you. Try to defend, he will attack you. You try to grab a pawn too many, he will just completely crush you. Uh, up until this point, it was still very much playable uh, for Black. Uh, but after C captures on B2, there was just no way to uh, to play this. Uh, although it seems like you should be able, because uh, he really calculated it well. D captures on E5, Knight captures Bishop D6. It seems like you're you're one move away from castling, uh, but not really. Knight captures on F7, and that's it. That's all there is to this game. Uh, so yeah, beautiful stuff, and um, I, 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 I'm very happy that uh, Mr. Mr. Doug decided to propose the uh, Terepka uh, via, via this channel, as it allowed us to show a very nice romantic game from 1935. Uh, we've covered a lot of uh, modern games uh, for, for for the past month or two, uh, so you know a, a change of pace is always more than welcome. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank um, uh, Doug, well, or rather uh, uh, propose in his name, Terepka, Will You Marry Me Repka from Doug. He, uh, and get this, uh, he says that they met while he was giving free chess lesson uh, in, a, uh, in a local bar.
Uh, so, uh, you know, if, if you guys uh, want to meet someone, go to a local bar, give up some free lessons, uh, you know, good things might happen. Uh, so yeah, all, all, the all the best to uh, Repka and the Doug. And I would like to thank Primoz Filigoy, 1984 uh, DWW and uh, Simon Johnson for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon. Continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon. And have an excellent rest of your day.